Welcome to the official spooky version of the MAP Technologies Podcast. Spooky dookie. Spooky dookie. <laughs> I am your host, the villain with the mostest, Blackie Doom. Is that a, is that, is that a real? Close enough. I mean, I can't say it. I mean, <laughs> it's probably more. <laughs> It's probably more important than, uh, more appropriate than MF Doom, I guess. I guess, yes, because we don't want to just outright get sued. We don't want to get sued. And tell Blackie Doom, actually, <laughs> hey, <laughs> using my likeness. We're going to get a an assist email later <laughs> from Blackie Doom. <laughs> I'm one of your hosts, Mike Peace, dressed up as uh, Dr. Doom, MF yeah. Doomish, some sort of conglomerate somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And to my left, Mr. Oh No. I'm dressed up as myself on a Saturday night home alone. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, then you know. If you're an audio listener, yeah, he has a, a gigantic the infinity gauntlet on. Half of you don't yep. know. <laughs> Take myself to infinity and beyond yeah. every Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pornhub. <laughs> and to my right. It's a me, outdated Italian stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> This is Charm City Champ. This is for you audio listeners. Uh, <laughs> Brian is dressed up like Tanuki Mario, not Raccoon Mario, JB. Get it right. Yeah. <laughs> Get your fluffy animals right. And we're bringing you the Halloween edition of our podcast. So thus us um, dressed up even more stupidly than what we already look. And <laughs> let's begin. I actually forgot it was Halloween. This is just how I was going to plan on dressing anyway. Right, right. <laughs> So you lucked up and just so happened, yeah. <laughs> GG's for you. Yeah. So what do we have first, as always? All right, well, like you said, it's the uh, Halloween episode. So today, later on in the show, we'll be going down the 13 best horror games of all time. Yes, 13, because 13 is that spooky, that spooky number. Spooky. Number. But let's start with redactions, like we always do. Okay. It was just one. It was a pretty big one, especially since I'm supposed to be the resident Xbox guy. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey. So I said that uh, Halo 4 is not included in the Master Chief Collection, and it actually is. Okay. In hindsight, I don't know why I thought it wasn't. <laughs> but you have every game but one. Right. <laughs> yeah, everything. Well, I mean, it has every Halo except for Halo 5 Guardians. Mm. Wouldn't it be funny if it skipped and had Halo 5 and you would just feel like, Halo 4 isn't on it. <laughs> like, it's literally number. And it's not even anything. Yeah. I like Halo 5. I know 5. they Halo ain't got 4. no Halo, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, every Halo except for Guardians is on it. Every Halo. And of course, like the RTS. Right. I mean, the turn-based yes. strategies. Yeah. Okay, cool. Besides that, we're fine. Oh, good, good, awesome. good, good, good. Mm-hmm. Right. What are we playing? Um, Myself, uh, Borderlands 3, still Shadow, Shadowlands. Mm-hmm. I tried to get back into Black Desert. I was a little bit lost. And then Fantasy Star 4, finishing that up. Uh, okay, back it up. Back that thing up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a marathon <laughs> race. <laughs> Black Desert, I heard of that game. I'm not familiar with it. Uh, MMO, I played it when it first came out. Mm-hmm. Um, I re-downloaded it. They like added a bunch of stuff it's like remastered it made it look a little bit better um there was a bunch more classes and i was completely utterly lost even starting from the beginning i started <laughs> a fresh new character and i was like okay very it's, it's still grindy okay. um, it's not like a quest base they have quests in it but to level up you got to do a lot of killing of stuff so it's very grindy so if you like those grindy type mmos this is absolutely it grindy so, uh, <laughs> uh, what system are you what are you, how are you playing it? i'm actually playing this i have it on it's on pc xbox and playstation 4 mm-hmm. i have it on xbox but i'm currently playing it on the pc and it's free right um no it's like 10 bucks it's very minimal. Uh, okay. when i got it it was 10 bucks I, so i'm just assuming it's still like 10 bucks i think it might be like 14 15 ish now but it's actually not a bad game for that price mm-hmm. um still borderlands 3 just it's borderlands okay. minus Fun and Fantasy Star Four for the classic for JB. Okay, Go back in. That remember. is the fa- that's the latest Fantasy Star, right? It's about to be ported to the uh, Series X, correct? No, that's the um sixteen bit. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, it was on the Genesis. I never actually. Oh, got I'm sorry. To I'm play. thinking Fantasy Star Online. Yeah, Fantasy Star Online Two was like out for the Xbox got and it, so got on it, and got so it. forth. That's free, kind of MMOs, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. But I'm playing OG, you know, turn base. Yeah, yeah. So that's it. Hmm. What about you, good sir? Modern Warfare, <laughs> the Halloween event. 
I've been grinding that for the last week. You know? Cool. So I know I'm aware of the Warzone stuff, mm-hmm. and we talked about that last week. So yeah. Modern Warfare also has a Halloween event. Well, yeah. Okay. Yes. So some of so basically the the uh, the ghosts in the in the in the night missions mm-hmm. um, levels are you can play in multiplayer too, ah. but you can't earn any of the Halloween rewards oh. in the multiplayer. You have to because you have to go to the um, Warzone map. To find the crates. To, to get the crates in a different location or stuff. And it's fairly it's fairly simple. You just go to a location, open up some crates, mm-hmm. and you get the item, mm-hmm. you know. And you gotta you have to get there's sixteen items you have to collect mm-hmm. to get the um the, the the event gun, which is the pumpkin pumper or something like that. Mm-hmm. So I was watching uh my son my like head. chasing some of the crates. <laughs> <laughs> are the crates are the locations of the crates? I understand it's a broad the checklist gives you the broad location of where they're at, like mm-hmm. the prison so, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, there's no, there's no, there, there, there aren't specific crates. Yeah, you, just you, can, you can walk into the area, first crate, you may get the item. Okay. Or you may have to open up five crates before you get the item. Got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. I was wondering about that. That's cool. Yeah. And, and the, um, but the, the fun part is the zombie, the zombie. Um, yes. The zombie uh, match. Yeah, I'm enjoying that too. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like battle royales that gives me a chance to win my way back. Mm-hmm. And I already liked Warzone because of the gulag, mm-hmm. but this makes it way easier to yes, get back to life. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I played with a I played with a couple of friends, and we came in second, fourteenth, mm-hmm. and third, mm-hmm. in, in consecutively. Like that's how how close it got at the end of, the, mm-hmm. of that game. As long as you can survive, um, even as a zombie, my my suggestion is it's it's trios. Mm-hmm. So my suggestion is have someone die immediately and stay a zombie, and while the other two keep trying to come back because mm. that way because that zombie is going to keep coming back got it yeah okay that's clever hmm. but that's it yeah <laughs> mike that sounds like your perfect kind of game you just die on purpose oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> great i'll wrap run circles around all you guys already halfway there <laughs> yeah because yeah. yeah. you die because you die you die you die as a human you come back as a zombie then you die as a zombie but they can buy you back mm-hmm. so you just keep coming back tell me it's awesome and then as a zombie too, you can run around, you can jump high, so you can get to places where your team can't get. Mm-hmm. So it's a strategic advantage to have a zombie on your team. Nice. Yeah. We figured that out. That's how we were able to survive so long. Because <laughs> the one person we were playing with wasn't that good. So they always ended up <laughs> the zombie first. Mm-hmm. So we were like, you just stay a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think I've seen because I was playing around and I noticed there was a squad that had a zombie guy and he was just Rocking aside him, like they he wasn't actively trying to get the vials to right. come back. Right. Right. Yeah. So, hmm. mm-hmm. and it's good. Yeah, and that zombie too, because the zombies, like the zombies, are quick. So yeah. that one, that person that's playing as a zombie can, if someone else gets turned, they can just kill somebody real quick, mm-hmm. get the vials, and keep it moving. Yeah. yeah, the jumping and that little stink bomb move that they got, that mm-hmm. thing is like. As OP as hell. Yeah. <laughs> I, it takes some getting used to the yeah. jumps. Um, I was looking like Shazam in training, trying to <laughs> jump on a roof. He <laughs> just over jump and yeah. <laughs> end up on another roof that you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's fine though. It was cool. But that's, all, that's all I'm playing. No, I, just, I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you wanted to like get in on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gun, bullets. KD. <laughs> I can <laughs> <I can> die. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's about it. So with my what am I playing, I guess I got to be a little transparent. So for all of you out there at home listening that or watching. He went and played strip poker. You did. That too. That's the see no, that was going to originally be my what are you. <laughs> I had a whole what are we playing already planned. And then. Made sure sh- he was home alone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we shoot this uh, the Wednesday before it releases. And early Wednesday morning, the floodgates opened. <laughs> and I, and I, I mean, Nintendo did a surprise direct. Yes, they did. And announced a bunch of games and demos that released today. <laughs> so I was like, oh, shit, I guess I should probably try to play this so I could talk about it. Right. So uh, they dropped a demo for uh, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I saw that, yeah. 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 So it's a pretty sizable demo. I played I played it through completion. Um, you. I know. It's because I like you guys. Oh, sacrifice my morning. <laughs> Look at him talking to the video. I don't do too <laughs> I mean, especially because I don't. I I'm a big Zelda fan. I'm not a fig a big fan of the Dynasty Warrior like games. Right. 
So I was kind of on the fence of whether I really wanted to get this or not. But um, Dynasty Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity is Dynasty Rule Warriors. Dynasty <laughs> Warriors Legend <laughs> Zelda. <laughs> it's one of those Dynasty Warrior like games. Uh, you start off the demo playing as Link, and um, you're playing right in front of Hyrule Castle. Isn't this the same one that came out for the Wii U and they just brought it No, over? this okay. is a whole new game. Oh, okay. So right. the big selling point of this game is it takes place in the Breath of the Wild universe specifically. Ah. And it tells you, so for those of you that never played Breath of the Wild, it starts off, the world has basically been taken over by Calamity Ganon. And a hundred years have passed since Calamity Ganon won this giant war and he has taken over everything, killed a lot of the major people. Zelda is in hiding. And Link was in a coma, and he's just waking up, and you have to take Hy- Hyrule back. Right? Popped him Xanax and fell out. Popped oh. him Xanax. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So this Hyrule Warriors takes place 100 years. It takes place before Clan and Gammon wins. So you learn how Ganon wins. Ah. And that's the selling point is you get all this lore that's unavailable. Backstory. Yeah. yeah. You learn where the Guardians come from. You learn where the Divine Beasts come from, stuff like that. It's a it's pretty cool for that. But besides that, this is very much just another Dynasty Warrior game. It's a lot of hordes of uh goblins that you just hacking and slashing, tapping X and Y a lot. Um there is something unique. So in Breath of the Wild, I'm sorry, I keep fixing my mustache. <laughs> in Breath of the Wild, you have a lot of these, I don't know what they're referred to as, but they're basically magical tools. Like uh you can spawn uh magic bombs, or you can call the cubes up out of nowhere that you can step on and stuff. You can do that in Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Okay. So that's pretty cool. It's another spin on that formula. And uh, you can also call on... You can switch characters on the fly. I know you can do that in Dynasty Warrior games. Switch characters on the fly. Yes? Does that sound? I know you play some of those Dynasty Warrior games. I do not. I was sitting there thinking. Um... I think that's a thing. No, you have to. So I don't know if you could do that later on in the game, but the ones I play, you have to, because each character has like a different story. Okay, so you, so pick you have to one play person. through this person, and then you play through the next person, and so on okay. and so forth. Okay, well, in... maybe after you get through it, I'm sorry, I mean, no, no, no. maybe after you get through it, after a while, you play through that complete, and you can switch on the fly. But the purpose of it is to go through each character to get the lore behind each person. Got you. Okay, so then Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity is a little different then. So you. There are you pick a mission and there's a couple characters that are part of that mission and you can swap through them on the fly oh, okay. each on different parts of the battlefield. So that's also pretty cool too. And you can command those other characters to meet you other places and do other things. Meet me in the alley, Bally, so yeah. Sally. I had fun. I don't think I'm gonna get it because I'm really not a fan of that type of game. But um if you are and you're also a fan of Zelda, look out for it. It comes out, <laughs> it comes out November twenty something. That's what I. That's all I got. It is fun. It is fun. But I'm just forewarning those Zelda fans that want to get this game solely because they want to have that story. Those story beats. You're not gonna want to slog through this just to get those story beats. Yeah, the Dynasty so, Warriors game, a Dynasty Warriors game. Either you like it or you literally. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if this is your thing, get it. If it's not, I would just stay away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also played so <laughs> the. Uh, Nintendo also surprise dropped. They remastered No More Heroes 1 and 2. They did. Basically as uh, an apology because No More Heroes 3 got pushed back to 2021. It never really had a release date other than 2020. But but 2020, the end of 2020 is fast approaching. So they finally admitted it's not coming out 2020. And to apologize. Yeah, they said no more. (laughs) No more heroes. (laughs) In 2020. 2020. (laughs) Except for No More Heroes 1 and 2, which is cool. So I downloaded one. I'm all, I'm a big fan of No More Heroes. I'm a big fan of Suda Fifty One. Yes, you are. Period. Yes, you are. And uh, No More Heroes is the one that started it all for me. So welcome back. I know. <laughs> um, one thing you'll notice right away is No More Heroes One and Two were on the original Wii, and the original Wii was only 480p. <laughs> <laughs> the max resolution you could do was 480p, and it only did four by three video. Right. So. So I was going to ask you not to cut you. So is is it still as good as you remember, or did it age well? I only played about an hour and a half, two hours, and I'm having fun. Okay. So this is a, it's a actual remaster, 1080p, 16 by 9. Okay. So they actually did have to go back and like do some reconstruction Finigling. rebuilding. Okay. And the control mapping is mapped for, for the Joy-Con, okay. obviously. So 
I played motion control and with normal heroes, it's not, it never was entirely motion control. You just did gestures to do certain things. Like you had to do a suggestive yeah, gesture to recharge your yeah. uh, oh, favor. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> and like when you want to do killing blows, you had to slash to the left or the right, up or down to do a killing blow. And he also does these like <laughs> wrestling moves that you can unlock and you have to do motion controls due to wrestling moves. Uh, so, but besides that, it is just button presses and button prompts. Um, uh, I like it. It's basically a, a 3D hack and slash. Um, and I'm having a lot of fun. It is just like I remember. It looks really good, especially since with Suda 51 games, his art style ages well. He doesn't really try to go for like the peak performance at the time. So it still has that endearing retro look. This mask is extremely uncomfortable. <laughs> I mean, feel free to tap out and take it off. I'm going to, nope, I'm going to fight it. I mean, <laughs> see, it. see, see the it. sacrifices we take for you people? Hit like, that sub button. Stab me in the face. Did you clean it before you put it over? Probably not. Oh. I mean, my face is way worse just take, just take a dread and put it around. <laughs> just tie it on. All right, but you. yeah, it is just how you remember it. Um, if you did play No More Heroes 1 before. If you didn't, I still think you should um, jump into it. It's a timeless game. I love it. If you love action, if you love sword fighting, if you love taking craps on the toilet to save your game. Ooh. Uh, okay. <laughs> or just taking craps in real life. Or taking craps yeah, in general, because yeah. you do take poops in the game. Yes, yeah. And um, so, I'm sorry. I, I should, have, I get to actual break, mechanic. Like, I should break like... down what No More Heroes is for people who haven't played it. It is basically a hero slasher game uh, reminiscent of maybe a Devil May Cry, just maybe not as fast as a Devil May Cry, mm -hmm. and not as complex as a Devil May Cry. You play as Travis Touchdown. He's an assassin, and he's fighting to get to the top of the assassins list. So right now he's on, he's like top thirteen, and you have to fight the assassins that are higher ranked than you to make it to number one. Uh, he wants to do this because he's broke. So a cool thing that you do in between missions is you do these like side gigs to earn money. So you can buy things like new moves, new combos and stuff like that. Come uh, customize your lightsaber because he fights with a lightsaber. And um, yeah, I think that pretty much covers it, breaks it down. Yeah, it's fun. I like it. If you like action adventure games, check it out. Check, check, check it out. Your mustache is freaking me out, by the way. It's probably going to fall off for the end of the show. <laughs> yeah. So like no a big caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> Mamma mia. <laughs> so that's what I'm playing. Okay. Yeah, man. That's, GG's for playing all that. I try. Thank you for giving up your morning for us and the do you, viewers. Do you miss your dad? He was there. <laughs> like, who? Missing you. <laughs> Come, come to dinner. <laughs> no, I'm Shut up, <laughs> Zelda. <laughs> All right. So the news, man. The news. The news. The news. The news. news so we news, news, got to be the news, news list, didn't you? Holy crap! Yes. News, news, no, no, that was what we were playing. Like. News. Oh. Person news. Right. <laughs> news is all over this place. What is not news? Yeah, what isn't news? <laughs> you watching us is news. Thank you for watching. Us. So yeah, like we said earlier, uh, we had to totally rewrite the news because literally the game industry Sorry. <laughs> lip shit. <laughs> <laughs> Ten o'clock this morning, and uh, we did our best. So I think the biggest news, well, not the biggest news, but the majority of our news today is the surprise Nintendo Direct Mini that drunk. I couldn't take it. Couldn't <laughs> take it. This surprise Nintendo Direct that dropped today. For those of you that can't see, uh, got him is tapped out and took off his yeah. I took my <laughs> his doom mask I'll off. I'll put it up here so you guys can see. Oh, thing's heavy. It is. It's made out of real metal. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Sherm. Sherm bought me this uh, for my birthday a couple years ago, and it's the real deal. And it's freaking heavy. His girlfriend has been happy ever since. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> put the mask on before we do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, like we said earlier, No More Heroes 3 has been delayed. Oh. No. Oh, I was looking yeah. forward to it. I know you were. I didn't know what it was till today. <laughs> so, like, No More Heroes, period? <laughs> oh, man, check it out. <laughs> you can totally, out. like, oh. stream it. But, yeah, um, Suda51's latest game, it was, uh, it is still a Switch exclusive. Uh, got postponed to 2021 unnamed date in 2021 and because of that they released no more heroes one and two remasters which i played they're really good check them out the 
regular price twenty dollars each, but this the first week they're in the shop, they're three dollars off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody I'm can a, use a discount. It sounds like neither of you play no more heroes, so you're probably not gonna have any input in that. Huh? Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll proceed. I don't play fun games. Oh. Right? <laughs> On to the next. <laughs> um, a really big announcement in the Nintendo Direct, at least for me, Control is going to be on the Switch. I saw that. And it released today. Mm-hmm. Technically. Yes. <laughs> so you can't... Obviously, if you... I've played through Control in its entirety on my PlayStation 4 Pro. Mm-hmm. And the PlayStation 4 Pro chugs like garbage We're trying to run Control. It's funny. <laughs> I... Um... <laughs> Was reading when I texted you earlier. I was reading a comment. And that's what people were saying. Like, how in the like this game is horrible on a PlayStation Four? How's it yes. gonna run on the Switch? Mm-hmm. So, ha-ha. right? They figured out a way. Ha-ha. <laughs> so, those of you who uh, had a Switch since its inception, Capcom tried to do this, and I think they are still doing it in Japan. Resident Evil Seven released on the Switch, but as a cloud game. So you download basically a. Uh, a really small file and it gives you access to the cloud server so you can play resident evil 7. right so like the switch never internally runs the game okay so you're just uh, kind of like streaming the game from somewhere else yes so 505 games is doing the same thing for control it's a cloud game yeah. you download a small file uh i did it today just to try it and uh, <laughs> <laughs> my day was sank <laughs> so when you launch the app you can choose whether to play control in performance mode, which I would assume it would be 1080p, uh, 30 to 60 frames a second. Right. And you can, in um, graphics mode, which would probably unlock the 4K resolution, textures, and things like that. So I tried to do performance mode and- Your switch blew up. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the gotcha. It said that all of our servers were busy and it put me in a queue. <laughs> <laughs> So I never got to launch the game. Okay. Welcome to Azrael. So, yeah. which, <laughs> which is, so I'm concerned for a lot of those people. And this goes into that um, argument of not really owning your game. Mm-hmm. So people bought Control today. And <laughs> are you going to do that? Um, like, oh, <laughs> I'm going to go back in. Okay. I fix the straps. <laughs> so people bought control today to play it on their switch mm-hmm. and then had to be told they're the 1000th person in line <laughs> in order to play control that's very weird to me right yeah i don't know how new for you yeah 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 welcome yeah, to yeah, yeah welcome to mmo we've, um, only, we've only been going through it for 15 years so wait 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 wait, wait. so so break that down for me so so there could be there's only a limited amount of people that can go to a server of course so okay. you have to and wait your turn so if there's 3,000 people able to get on the server and you have 4,000 people to get in, you got to wait your thousands. So when someone else logs off, someone goes in, logs off, goes in. So so that happens to y'all like commonly? All the time. It depends on the server. On like high population servers, mm-hmm. that can be a pretty regular thing, you know, like peak hours mm-hmm. um, or like on Tuesdays or like patch days, like that's... Yeah. That'd be pretty common. So many people trying to get on, you literally have to wait. But that's, again, that's that's on a high population yeah. server. If you're on one of the, the lower population servers, then that'll never problem. happen to you. That but, sucks. But the caveat to that is when you play something like a World of War, Warcraft, you can switch a server. Like, okay, this server's high. Let me go to a low pop. So I don't know if you guys, no. you don't have to. So yeah, you, you just choose. literally just have to wait. You just have to wait. There's okay. no, all right, let me try to pick a different server. They just, I guess they auto pick a server for you. And if all the servers are full, you're screwed, bud. <laughs> you, just, you, just tell, you just tell all your friends to type in chat and convince everybody that, you know, if they hit Alt F4, it'll, it'll <laughs> fix something. Uh, and like 200 people there. log off and, then, and you're good. <laughs> Free gold, Alt F4. <laughs> so, yeah, I unfortunately did not get to play Control to tell you all how it runs. <laughs> I'm assuming it. I, I guess. I guess it runs well. Yeah. The, again, uh, when I read the comments, I guess people haven't played it, but they were just saying like it's chugs on the. Four. It, I'm telling you, I have a four pro, and it did not do well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so we will see. I'm yeah. assuming you'll give us an update on that one. I will. Um, I'll try. I'll keep trying. Um. So to tag, buddy, to tag on to that, Hitman Three. Once it launches day and date will do the same thing on the switch okay so hitman 3 will be a cloud game that you can play on the switch okay and cool. we'll see we'll see how that goes that's a different uh developer and publisher so maybe it'll be handled differently 
uh, Hyrule Warriors 2. They show gameplay of that during uh, the Nintendo Direct. And the big thing they revealed is you'll be able to control the four divine beasts. So, now, how much Breath of the Wild have either of you played? I played a little bit of it to know what a, a divine bit. beast is. Yeah, but not a whole lot. Okay. <laughs> so, in in a Breath of the Wild, the divine beasts are basically the giant, the four giant dungeons that you have to go through in uh, Breath of the Wild to kind of un- power up Link enough to defeat Cal- Calamity Ganon. So they really power it down until you go into them and power them back up. But in uh, Age of Calamity, they have not been powered down. Calamity Ganon. So you no, actually, <laughs> there will be parts in the game where you actually will be controlling the Divine Beast and using them in battle. And they look pretty cool. Two. Yeah. Calamity Ganon. So You're just going to... Yes. Say so random, random yes, Breath of the Wild go, references. Yes, yes. So Cookie. Hyrule Warriors 2 <laughs> is a sequel to Breath of the Wild? Uh, there you go with the hard question. <laughs> so I, what was so I haven't played it, but based on everything that you've explained about this Hyrule Warriors, there is, something doesn't add up. There is a Breath of the Wild 2 in the works, so I would say no. Okay. This is just kind of like a side. So consider it... Um, what was it? Is it a sequel to Breath of the Wild? Like literally Breath of the Wild 2? Or it, just... It's not literally yeah, Breath okay. of the Wild 2, okay. but it's, it it's is. Majora's Mask to the Ocarina. It's like additional lore for Breath of the Wild. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't call it a sequel because it's a whole different genre game. It's right. not a. It's not a... But it, so it, it fills in the gaps of the story. Yes. But nothing in the game actually affects the story. Correct. Because thing, okay. Breath of the Wild 1 takes place after Age of Calamity. Okay. So. Breath, the things that happened in Breath of the Wild has already happened okay. before Age of Calamity. So nothing that happens is going to change what happens in Breath of the Wild. Okay. Inception. It's just going to explain what ha- why Breath of the Wild is the way it is. Okay. Calamity again. Did, did that make sense? It does. Okay. It does. I just wanted to make sure. All right. I just wanted to make sure. Because you, <laughs> you're filling me with self-doubt. I mean, <laughs> I mean you just get ready, get ready for a redaction next week. <laughs> I'm just about to say Get ready. <laughs> yeah, I think that was all. <laughs> that was. I'm gonna hurry up and end that Nintendo Direct talk. <laughs> that was all the important news from the Nintendo Direct. <laughs> but Nintendo wasn't the only people screwing up my rundown. Okay. Um, so no more. Not no more heroes. Jesus Love Christ. No, hero. no <laughs> Man's <Yeah>. Sky. <laughs> yeah. Was it? Uh, no, no Man's Sky announced that they're gonna have a next gen update available at the launch of Series X and PS5. Okay. And they're making a lot of big changes. Uh, graphic fidelity is gonna go up. The more yeah, the there mustache, the mustache there is going. <laughs> so, Caterpillar's the uh, the. Uh, <laughs> The graphic fidelity of No Man's Sky is going to go up. They're adding 32-player multiplayer. Mm. Uh, they promised the load times to go down 5 to 10 times. Ooh. So 5 to 10 times shorter load times. Look at the brain on brain. Yeah. Okay. Procedurally generated planets, procedurally generated missions. So this thing, from the way it described, it was described, it looks like this was the intent of what No Man's Sky was supposed to be From when the beginning. it launched. Oh, oh, the mask is gone. Yeah, I can't. I tried. It's, it's, it's falling. Right. They're falling to the wayside. I still, <laughs> I still got my hand. So. I look snazzy, though. <laughs> so, yeah, we're getting closer and closer to what they promised No Man's Sky was going to be at launch. Right. So I'm excited. I think I'm, I'm going to play it. It's going to be available at launch of the uh, next-gen consoles. The price went back up on it. Um, I would could, imagine. Yeah, you could get it relatively <laughs> cheap. And I remember when I went there, just glanced again, I was like, oh, that's not what it was. Yeah, no, no, no. Because okay. it was originally like, I seen the PS4 version for like seven bucks. Literally, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now yeah. you probably know, they're probably going back up to mm-hmm. like 60. So if you already own the current gen versions, you get these upgrades for free. Cool. On both the PS5 and Series X. Nice. Yeah? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll cool. take that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take that, take that. Uh, finally, and probably the worst news of the day. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> late last night, didn't see this coming. Uh, CD Projekt Red tweeted that Cyberpunk 2077 got delayed again. December is what they claim it is. December 10th, after two uh, weeks 20, ago, 20, 20, 20, 20. <laughs> after two weeks ago, announcing that the game has went gold. Mm. So, 
for those of you that aren't familiar with that term, when a game goes gold, it's kind of an old term. When a game goes gold, developers say that when they basically print the first copy of the game on disc or on cartridge and it's ready to go on store shelves. So that's what it means when the game's go go goes gold. I don't know what it means in the current way things are because every game doesn't have a physical release. But basically, I, I would assume it still means this game is ready to be sold. I thought, go, I thought that meant they have uh, people have already pre-purchased that many. No? No. Okay. You're thinking of like record sales. Okay, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> That's like music. Okay. Yeah, when a game goes gold, that just, that just means it is ready to be sold. Okay. But um, CD Projekt Red backed that up and they said, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't mean ready to go. <laughs> uh, so what do y'all feel? I feel that this is just a fever dream and cyberpunk is not a real game and it's just, <laughs> it's just not doesn't exist it's part of the uh, 2020. <laughs> i mean all of this is going to be fine if the game comes out and it's at least semi worth the hype mm-hmm. and it's working mm-hmm. do i don't want this game to be pushed back five or six times and we get another fallout 76 that's just going to be oh, deplorable oh, oh. this is this is the next anthem Jesus, ah, man, that's a big claim. That is, oh, we're all, we're, we're already there. <laughs> <laughs> we're there. <laughs> How many times did Anthem get pushed back before it came out? Anthem had a um, it had a nine year it had a nine year development cycle, and six of that was because they kept changing over mm. directors and things mm. kept happening. So they were like three years behind. Yeah, when they finally released it. Hmm. Metroid Prime 4 would like to talk to you. <laughs> so, yeah. all jokes aside, I'm fine with the constant delays because I'd rather you just delay the game and make sure it's good. Right. And also delay the game and give the developers proper time instead of like forcing these unfair crunch situations. Mm-hmm. I'd rather just wait. Yeah, it's fine. Just wait. I'm, I'm willing to bet they're adding microtransactions. No. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's bad enough. I'm pretty sure we're going to get this game. It's going to be huge. It's going to be 40 minutes to go down. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a significant patch, 20 mm-hmm. to 60 gigabyte patch. And I just don't want to wait two hours to play this game. And it's the first thing I do is walk through the floor. Mm-hmm. Like, what? Like, no. <laughs> this game been pushed back eight years. And the first thing I do is, you know, bugs out. Mm-hmm. Like, if it's a solid game, then okay. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm okay with the wait. Yeah. So. We'll see. I'm pretty sure it's even as many times as it gets delayed, it's going to release and it's probably still going to have like a 20 gig day one mm-hmm. patch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I don't know. I just would rather, I'd rather developers stop building hype. You get what I'm saying? Like yeah. I miss the days where we got this new game and it's coming out next week. And it comes out next week. And it comes out next <laughs> week. You know what I'm saying? Instead of like, we're hearing, we're getting this slow trickle of news for a decade. Mm-hmm. And now, like, we're getting impatient, rightfully so. So, I don't know. I just, I get that's marketing. But I we, I don't even care anymore. I don't need that. I, but, and that's where we're getting at, right? Right. I'm just like, whatever, dude. Just, I'm not even looking forward to it. I don't even have it pre ordered, to be honest. I ain't either. I'm still, so, I'm still pulling shrapnel of, of Anthem out of my <laughs> The it world. Ran, yeah. landed up there so hard. This cruel world has right. killed your childlike yeah. dreams. Yeah, it is. I don't get, I don't get enthused about games anymore. No. You almost, you almost can't. can't. You'll, you'll, you'll get let down. I just, I, don't, I just don't think anything should be announced more than like three months before it's released. Like, I agree. I, I, I kind of feel the same way. I don't, I don't need to see coming 2022. I yeah. don't know. Like, get out of here. Yeah. Mar- Mar- Marvel's good with the hype. And they, I, don't they, need, I don't need it, though. They've been, they've Nobody been needs consistent. It. I need it. I need it. But, when it comes to Marvel, I need it. But that's the thing. So Marvel <laughs> does that, but Marvel is also good with sticking with the timeline. Right. You know what I'm saying? They only recently started delaying stuff because, because of, COVID. of COVID. Right. But they'll say a date, and they'll announce that date like two years in advance. Mm-hmm. But damned if that movie doesn't come out that date. Oh, yeah. And, and, <laughs> and in some instances, they even move it up. They For move sure. it up sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's the news. Ad break. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. So, <laughs> uh, Patreon, everybody. When you... <laughs> Some of my masters like has Ugh, how long and how old? Listen, I, if when off camera I'll tell you some of the other places I put my face and you'll understand this <laughs> masters walking across. It's the cleanest. Yeah. So 
What is happening right now? We're like going off. Get it. Get it. Get it. Can we all just woosa? Get it together. Let's bring it back in. Bring it in. Let's talk about the ad. Arara. Join our Patreon. <laughs> so, uh, we appreciate your guys' support so far. Thanks yes. to everybody. We've got a made some really big changes the building is going to change right yes uh, we're moving to a new location that's the, that's the... we got enough patreon donations for a new building yeah, <laughs> yeah man but we still need more <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes we're, um, we're moving the shop um 322 west baltimore street it's significantly bigger than 29 park avenue if you haven't been down here uh, it used to be a strip <laughs> so well <I've> been told <laughs> <laughs> But we're adding permanent gaming monitors, CRTs, more of everything. We have, uh, we've got a bunch of stuff that we have coming. We'll just keep you guys informed with everything that we have coming out. I don't want to uh, say some stuff and it doesn't happen. You'd be like, what happened to the such and such? But yeah, we got a lot of stuff coming up anyway. So yeah. So we'll still be open minimally. We'll still be doing repairs and stuff like that. But the gaming lounge and like coming in and doing stuff just won't be available. So, you know, just still contact us if you need some stuff. We still got y'all. Yeah. And we also, you can still do a lot of the shopping on MAPGameTech.com. Yes. 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 Um, we'll be starting the podcast. Uh, we'll be taping the podcast virtually. Yes. Right. Until the tape location. That. Uh -huh. is. <laughs> That's why we keep him yes. around. So you'll see, though, for those of you who watch it, watch the uh, podcast on YouTube, we will have to tape it uh, virtually on Discord. So it, it, they will still exist. They just will look a little different until we get our space up and running. Up and running. In the space it will be mm -hmm. soon. I guess that meets the requirement of an ad break. I think so. Oh, my God. Follow us on. Ad break. It's oh, wait. Oh, we're, it's over. Yeah, okay. we're not That's doing fine. that. Oh, yeah. Right, just I thought bit. I would do it. Right. Now when you're ready to get into it, I know, right? It's not a thing. Damn it, just feel away from that. It's that tanuki. <laughs> <laughs> Hate it here. <laughs> Horror. 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 Yeah, it is that time of the year again. It's spooky time. It is spooky dookie time. Spooky dookie time. We think we've all played a few horror games in our heyday. Mm -hmm. So what horror games do we like? Yeah, so I like the way we uh, can, uh, created our superhero uh, video game list. So mm -hmm. I think let's stick to the same pattern and do the same thing. Round Robin, name some horror games. We'll decide on the fly where they belong on the list until we build a list of 13 games. Mm -hmm. So I think the only criteria we really got to stick to is I think the game has to make a conscious effort to scare the player. Right. So something like Dead Rising, I don't think would go on the horror list, even though it has zombies in it. Dead Rising is not scary. You're scared by a guy dressed as Mega Man chopping things Man, up with no. a... <laughs> <laughs> those rednecks. They were scary. Well, I guess rednecks are scary if you're a certain person. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe not to the masses, huh? You got zombies on the bottom, rednecks up top. Like, come on. <laughs> So who wants to go first? I'll go first. Okay. Friday the 13th, NES. Okay. Okay. As a kid, even as an adult, when Jason pops out yeah, of nowhere. Yeah, you just never know. <laughs> just... Yeah, that, that was a pretty early game to have that kind of random mechanic, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It just pops out of nowhere. Just pop up. Like... And it takes a thousand hits to make him go away. <laughs> like just throwing rocks at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... It was pretty. It was a pretty good game though, because it was one of the first games where like you had you had several different characters, and every character had different attributes. Mm -hmm. Like some characters could run faster than the others, some could jump that, jump yeah. higher than the others. That, yeah, it was pretty fun. Um, and it was probably the first game I ever played where kids actually got murdered. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you had to run to the cabins before he got them, and um, when you did, you actually got to fight. Jason kind of like Mike Tyson style. You could, yeah. yeah, you had to get to the cabin before he murdered yeah, you, the kid. You didn't see the kids getting murdered, but it's on implied. the map, it's implied. Right. You have a counter, there's like 30 kids or whatever, or 40 kids, and the number just goes yeah, down. The longer you take. And you'll just keep hearing the alarm. Like, <laughs> oh, no. And then it'll just stop. 29. Okay, let's go back this way. Oh, my you know? God. Yeah. It's so dark. Yeah. yeah. Are we sure kids didn't die on like that McDonald's kid? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, good game now. Ah. Yeah, the kid, yeah, that, that, that game still scares me. Right? Well, <laughs> since 
that is uh, by default right now our number one on the list, right? Number you never one. played it? Uh, I played it, right? But when I had an NES, I was a little young, so I okay. didn't know how to play it. Oh, okay. So I was just running around dumb, <laughs> getting killed by Jason and not understanding why I was getting killed by Jason. <laughs> How's this guy's problem? So I played it, but I didn't enjoy it, but it was 100% my fault why I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> so I'll take you guys' word for it. Okay. Friday 13th. NAS. All right, Godimus, you want to uh, take a swing? Silent Hill. Silent Hill. Number one. Yeah, no, Silent Hill one? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. What about Silent Hill one? So coming from Resident Evil, which had more um, jump scares for me, you mm -hmm. know, like, there was just an overall sense of dread, especially with the fog and you just knowing, especially when you're little calm will go off and you would just know something's coming and you're just not so my character would just stop and i was what, what the and, the, <laughs> and they the enemies in it just looked so like something was off they didn't For look sure. like your typical like zombies you know that's the nurses of course in later anniversary you've seen the mm -hmm. nurses with their faces all bond you know bandaged up and that was just different for games at that time because it just had a sense of dread and horror just especially when you would go and it would go into spooky time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just knowing like something weird is coming. Like you just hear that comma. You're just like, what? Those little kid things that just come up and like grab your legs. And you're like, ah, <laughs> get out of my way. So yeah, it, that had more of a sense of like dread to me. So, you know, Silent Hill was, plus it was a good game. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah good game. So I had two Silent Hills that I was going to suggest. The one that I was going to suggest that's a lot like one is Silent Hill 2. But the only difference between two and one that I can point out right now is that's the one that introduced Pyramid Head. Yes. And Pyramid Head was, uh, was yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, uh, you probably, yeah. So now that I guess you mentioned that Pyramid had really made like, yeah, because it, it still had that, but that sick, that mofo. Yeah, he wound up being like iconic. Yes, well, yeah. There was, I was reading, I can't, I, I should have looked it up, or mm -hmm. I can still look it up. But, he served a purpose. Pyramid Head. Pyramid Head. He did. Yeah. I've I read that somewhere too, but I forget um, what purpose like it was. Like design wise? I, no, 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 no. Like in the game. Okay. Like it was a reason why he was chasing you. I think it was because um, you, the character, whatever character he was playing, was getting chased by Pyramid Head because mm -hmm. the character still hadn't come to grips or accepted. And that's what, they what the did. Oh. it was the embodiment of that. Right. You are correct. So that's why he kept chasing them. And once they accepted, the things that they did, the, the wrongs that they did, it went away. he would stop, he yeah. would go away. So I've played through several Silent Hills through completion, mm -hmm. but admittedly, when I get to the end of those Silent Hill games, I still have no idea what the hell is happening in the Silent Hill <laughs> Same games. Thing. So you're really like <laughs> opening my eyes right now. But yeah. the only reason why I do that was I watched the, actually there's a gentleman who just did an explanation on all of the, and I sat and watched like huh. three hours. Well, I listened to it while I was, Mm -hmm. uh, playing something, and he literally explained who, what, where, why, and everything, and that's literally what it is. So yeah, pyramid so, has yeah, just the, the embodiment. The games that. basically, the characters are like they're going through purgatory. Right. Right. I got. They that. haven't come. They haven't accepted the wrong that they did. Oh. Okay. So the game, basically, the whole game is them going through so, the different stages of them, their I'm, acceptance, and then once you get to the end, it's kind of like they come to terms with. And the second one, you're a guy, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you. You kill your wife because she was wife. sick. Right. And mm -hmm. that's what Pyramid, he feels guilty for killing his wife was sick uh -huh. and he helped kill her. And that's what Pyramid is. Which explains why the bad guys are all the nurses. Mm -hmm. Damn. Look yeah. at you. Holy. <laughs> I kind of need to play it now. Oh, again, so, I need to play it again. So it's like they're, they're technically aren't, you aren't really, you, you are not really a hero in the game. Oh. You're just somebody stuck in your own hell. grief and yeah. you're stuck in your own hell. And it just so happened Silent Hill brings that grief out Physically, mm -hmm. from the Physical little girl that was there. Yeah. My third eye has been open. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to burn some stage. <laughs> now, now, with knowing that the games make the whole yeah. Yeah. sense now. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> when I get in, I'll send you that link to that gentleman. Yeah, please. Explain. Yeah. Um, so are we in agreement that between one and two, we're okay with two? Well, yeah, we'll two. go with two. Yeah. Five, yeah, two. I'll go with two, because two was the first one I played. Okay. And and two would probably really like two. I think universally, a lot of people agree that two is the best one yeah. of all of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and are we in, 
is two going higher or lower than Friday the 13th? We'll put it higher. Okay. Put it higher. So yeah. it is now the current number one, Silent Hill 2. Brooklyn Zoo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so I guess I'm next. I'll suggest something. I'll suggest something a little more new than everybody. We know a Resident Evil has to get on the list. Right. Right? I and fall under the camp that I think Resident Evil 7 is probably the scariest Resident Evil that I've played. Absolutely. Um, yeah. The yeah. earlier Resident Evils kind of went for, like I said, the jump, jump scares. scares. You know, right. dog jumping through here or the nemesis just popping up. Mm -hmm. But 7. 7, like, yes. <laughs> I've seen a one little, uh, like, gift where the guy's going through the thing mm -hmm. and the girl just walks past the door mm -hmm. and you see the paws, but... Then he just turns it off. No, we're not. We're not even doing this. You can see the the pause, the middle button come up, the turn off. He's just like uninstall. Yeah, 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 yeah. PlayStation got the one. Yeah, we're not doing this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you hit the nail on the head. Resident Evil Seven was probably the first Resident Evil that I've played that did a good job building the atmosphere and creating that. So a good horror game for me is. You have that feel of fear even when nothing is happening. Yeah, that immersion. You just like something is coming yeah. somehow, somewhere. Yeah. And you're just always just looking over your shoulder. For and that's sure. what makes the game good. Like yeah. you're immersed in it. And yeah. 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 So yeah, out of all of them, I think seven definitely needs to be on seven this list. is it, yeah. Um what are we doing with it? <laughs> is it going so it's definitely going above Friday the thirteenth, right? I mean, I'll put Probably put it above Silent Hill because it's almost the same thing, but just a better rent. I mean, it looks way better. I think so, so too. Yeah. So. You agree? I never played it. Hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we agree. <laughs> yeah. All right. Whatever. RE7 is. Two out of three. Yeah. 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 RE7 <laughs> is the new one. <laughs> okay. Silent Hill 2 moves down to two. Uh, Friday the 13th on the NES is now three. All right. John, you got something? Uh, the Five Nights at Freddy's series. Okay. I, yeah. I'm glad you. Yeah, I was going to. Bring that up. I didn't think anybody yeah, was gonna bring it up. I don't think I don't. I don't think you could say one game is better than the other because mm -hmm. the lore and the story is so tight that yeah. it, it's all one. Okay. It's really all one. Mm -hmm. You know, one one complete series. So, I've seen them, never partook in them. Oh but, man, I yeah. played the first one. I was said I would never play another <laughs> Freddy's again. <laughs> I can't take it. I can't take it. It's too. It raises my anxiety. So I watch other people play it, uh -huh. and then I can barely watch other people play it. <laughs> so I just, uh, I just go to Game Theory. Okay. And every time they drop a video, I just catch up okay. <laughs> with the lights on. So the day. I did not play any Friday uh, Five Nights at Freddy's until recently. I streamed it for the channel, mm -hmm. and yep. if if y'all haven't seen it, go to youtubecom backslash MVP Technology <laughs> and check the archive out. So I played Five Nights at Freddy's VR. Mm -hmm. um, so that basically has a VR version of FNAF 1 through 3 mm -hmm. and a couple of, I believe, original games for VR. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it, that's... I was legit, like, <laughs> scared. Like so that. I'm, I'm sorry. So you played it on VR, you said? Yeah, okay. on PSVR. Okay. I'm assuming having... I'm pretty sure playing a horror game in VR is way more immersive. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was... It was insane. Like I, so, from the outside looking in before I played it, you, obviously you see all the FNAF stuff, and it's just like Freddy the Bear mm -hmm. and freaking Chica, freaking Chicken, and like you're like this is ridiculous. Yeah, but okay. it's it's hard. <laughs> it is legit terrifying mm -hmm. to <laughs> to get in there. I agree with you that mechanically, uh, the games are kind of old. It's the it's the same thing. It's just. They add more uh, intricacy to it. Yeah, yeah, like it's more things you have to do at the same time, and more uh, rooms and doors you have to watch at mm -hmm. the same time. Um, so if we had to pick one, maybe I would, I would just stick with one. Yeah. Or so then let's do. Um, what's what's the one with all? There is there is there is a Five Nights at Freddy's. There's like a collection of all the games that had came out with. It has every. This character. is the v that's the one I played. That's the VR. So it's called uh, Jesus Christ. What is, is the subtitle? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Five Nights at Freddy's. If you if you Google Five Nights at Freddy's VR, it'll tell you what the subtitle okay. is. So then that Help could, Wanted. Is it Help Wanted? Yes. It's because it has it has every um animatronic that had been in the series yes. thus far, and you can you can custom custom. I thought it was custom. I thought it was custom night. Yeah, it's custom got, um, night. Very good Look review. up custom night and see if that's it. 
as custom knights the one I'm thinking about. Yeah, but Help Wanted, okay. the one I played, it had right at uh, one through three and a bunch of other games. But either way, I mean, it, I mean, it's custom yeah, it is called Ultimate Custom Knight. Is All what right. I'm thinking about. Then let's put Ultimate Custom Knight on it. Yep, Ultimate Custom Knight. Where does it go? Right it's now we have 50 selectable animatronic characters. Yeah, because you can you can make your own you can make your own levels and custom mm-hmm. levels and stuff like that. But check this out. Check this out. So um, <laughs> don't play it alone. <laughs> <laughs> Legit, night. like I I am not overselling. Even it. if that you play it on really, your phone, <laughs> it was really scary. Okay. Oh, um, right now we have uh, oh, it's free. Nice. Okay. You gonna do that on? It's free on Steam. <laughs> <laughs> so. But I would go with VR though. I would go with VR. Yeah. VR, even it has the earlier games, but the actual VR itself is a, and, a, a continuation of the story. Mm-hmm. So I, I would say VR. Okay, so help one. Go, yeah, help one. Yeah. Uh, where are we putting it right now? Three is Friday the Thirteenth. Two is Silent Hill. Two and one is RE Seven. Put, put it over um, Friday the Thirteenth. Okay, yeah. I agree. Let's put it at three. I agree. Yeah. All right. So the new three. Still not gonna play. FNAF, <laughs> FNAF Help Wanted. Let me check it out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah problem with it. I, Resident Evil 7. FNAF's going to get your anxiety up. Just put it that way. So I didn't play a lot. I played enough of Resident Evil 7 to get the gist of it. I didn't complete it. Mm-hmm. I did the same thing. I did it. This gentleman who I was talking to did a an ex- explanation, and he finished explaining what happened in 7. So mm-hmm. I didn't play enough of I just played like Two, three hours of it to get. You just, you just need to play 10 minutes of the nap. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'll never want to play it again. Uh, Mike, you got something? Well, it's, I was kind of peeping. You have oh, yeah. um, Dead Space, the first yes. one, though. Number three, no. Number two, just did more of what the, I remember playing the first Dead Space, mm-hmm. and those necromorphs were just hideous, mm-hmm. man. They just come running at you and. If you don't know, if you never played a Dead Space, you have to shoot the limbs off mm-hmm. to like kill them, and and you get to stomp them. So, and they were just so grotesque looking. It was almost reminiscent of if you ever seen the movie The Thing, where they pull up the mm-hmm. end thing in the beginning, and it's still just twisted, and they're just twisted malformations of just people. And again, the game is dark, so it's always giving you that sense of dread. And unlike kind of like Resident Evil. Mm-hmm. You know, these things come from anywhere. They're coming from above you, from out the fence, and it's always just something. And you are, I literally just played the game like this, which is aiming all, I'm just walking through <laughs> slow, because I know something <laughs> is coming. Unlike Resident Evil or Silent Hill, where I could kind of like let up and run, mm-hmm. I don't. Dead Space took me 85 million hours because. <laughs> That's right, I'm 83 feet. Yeah, because <laughs> I know something is coming. So. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. The reason why I, I put uh, this space so high on my personal list is because there are a few horror games where you're playing as somebody as capable as Isaac, I think his mm-hmm. name is. Because Isaac's not a small guy. He's a pretty fair-sized guy, and the, the weapons that he have are very powerful. Yes. So you really have no reason to be scared. But you're scared. Because you know something <laughs> is coming. Even though you... I mean, you can never be prepared for what you don't know is coming. Yeah. You know... If you got a machine gun, if you don't see the thing coming from above you, well, the machine gun ain't gonna do you mm-hmm. any good, and that's just a part of the you know horror of it. And um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this might be a redaction, mm-hmm. but a tidbit of information: the each episode, the beginning of each uh, where it spells out that your wife is dead already. No. So you're going there, yeah. So huh. when you, if you ever look back, the be- if you spell out each beginning of each episode's word, like the first, it spells out your. Know, I think her name is like Michelle or something like that. Yeah, she's dead. Oh, I didn't know Spoiler that. Spoiler alert. It's <laughs> not video game trivia. Yeah. A couple months ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> JB, you got any honorable mentions for Square Games? Any games that kind of, like, you play? Like, uh, kinda... Nothing comes to mind except for Bottom of the Ninth. <laughs> <laughs> that, game, <laughs> that game is really terrifying. Yeah, you've been here. Okay. Yeah, when, you're, when, you're, when you're 23 innings in and the score is 0-0, zero, zero, it's impossible <laughs> to get a hit on rookie difficulty. <laughs> that is kind of scary. it's 4 in the morning. <laughs> Uh, your wife is like, I, why are you I, sobbing? How'd he die? Some say he's still playing. <laughs> Somewhere. If you listen closely. <laughs> the only game to give me nightmares. You can hear him screaming. 
<laughs> the 57th inning. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're uh, back to you. This base, where are we putting it on the list? Um, I'll let you guys decide that. I don't have a... John, have you played this base? Yeah, I played this base. Okay. Uh, mm. You sound lukewarm. Yeah. I mean, it was scary. <laughs> yeah. It was scary. Um, so, but it just below FNAF? I, I put it below FNAF. Yeah. But above Friday the 13th. Me, yeah. Okay. For me, it just didn't do it. No, okay. I, I kind of agree. I do. I, I enjoy Dead Space 1 specifically, 2-2 two, two as, as, as well. But um, I wouldn't put it above our top three right now. Yeah. Well, fair for me. Okay. Four is Dead Space 1. And five is Friday the 13th. So back to me. Um, I hold this game near and dear. Not even just as a really good horror game. It's just a game that I really enjoy playing and I go back to it every now and again. Uh, it's Super Massive's first game, I believe. Ooh, I'm going to have to go back and check that now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Until Dawn. Have any of y'all played that? I have not, well, not seen it. Is that the one it's the PS4 the... exclusive right. where it's basically a teen slasher. Oh. So you play as several teenagers. Okay. They go up to a cabin okay. and one of them gets murdered. And the murderer is on a loose. So you have to kind of like Figure go through out. the game. You play, taking, You take time playing as each uh, teen through the game. And you have to keep them alive. And you unlock a special ending if at the end of the game they all stay alive. But if somebody dies, that's it. They're just dead for the rest of the game. Okay. So there's, you can end that game with everybody being dead, or you can end the game with everybody being alive, or different combinations. And it's pretty cool because of that and a lot of other things. How dub did you get every? I, th- I remember you telling me about this. I think you replayed it to play to get everybody alive. <laughs> the first time. So to to be perfectly transparent, the game, I made it all the way. I was probably like thirty minutes away from the climax of the game. And one of my characters died this so cheap way. So she <laughs> she's walking. Most of the time, your characters are paired together. So I was paired with this girl. The person I was paired with walked off. And so I'm trying to find her. And it sounded like she was calling for me. It was a, the, the cave forked. And it sounded like her voice was coming from the left fork of the road. So I went down there, come to find out the monsters in the game can mimic can voice. mimic people. Okay. So I went down there and it was actually a monster and they just there was no way to escape it once you walked down that path and she was dead. Mm. So eight hours of gameplay for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I had to play through the whole thing again to get the perfect ending. But I did wind up getting that perfect ending. Good. But uh besides the cheap deaths, it is a super fun game and especially in a time it came out during an era where the teen slasher was not relevant. Like there were no screams anymore, no um, I know what you did last summers. And to come out at the time that it did, probably like four or five years ago. Right. And to still be good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um the same can't be said for some of their other games, like Man of a Dan. I never right. heard of that. You never heard of Man of a Dan? Man oh, of a Dan. Maybe I have Man of a Dan. What? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> so Super massive games now, they don't just make PlayStation exclusive anymore. They make games for the Xbox and the PlayStation, and they have this anthology. So they're making new horror games, shorter ones, Mm -hmm. once a year. And the first one they made last year was called Man of Medan. I've never heard of that damn I Don't worry about it. (laughs) Sorry I brought it up. It's not that good. But uh, Until Dawn was really good. I enjoyed it. Go play it. All right. Who is it? Man of Man of Medan. Man of Medan. M E D A N. Rubber band man. Man, right. I the man. <laughs> the Dark Pictures Man of. Yes, Man-a-man. the Dark Pictures anthologies, and uh, the latest one, Little Hope, comes out this week. Little Hope. Little Hope looks like it's going to be a lot better. Game looks pretty good. It graphically looks good, and it plays like Until Dawn. It's just the story's not good. Yeah, I've never heard of that game a day before in my life. Let's put PlayStation 4. Yeah, it plays exactly like Until Dawn, except they add some other things. There's a co-op on it where two people can take control of different teenagers, but you still it's still the same thing, whereas everybody can make it at the end alive. Okay. Or everybody okay. can die. All right. I'm yeah. sorry. I I I You're enthralled now by this game. I just <laughs> one of the actresses in the game. I just took a 
complete detour from the game. Right, yeah. Oh, he's about to put the gauntlet back yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go on and get ready. Yeah. <laughs> it, was a, it was inevitable. <laughs> I will smash this into oblivion. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I guess because not of y'all played until dawn, you're not gonna have a lot of input. No, as far as where I mean, goes. I've seen it. I know it was a pretty good game, but I just didn't partake. So I'll let you. I like it, but I don't think as far as being iconic, it's not as iconic as our top four. Okay, so maybe. So I would. I'm gonna just put Friday the 13th over here because that's the one we keep writing. It's right there. Hello. <laughs> it's still there. It's just it's, in the corner. It's, it's, I'm going to make sure it stays on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Until Dawn is our new five. So right now, as the list reads, six, Friday the 13th for the NES, five, Until Dawn, four, Dead Space, three, FNAF, two, Silent Hill 2, one, RE7. All right. Okay. Uh, back to you. Um, this is a classic. Okay, it was my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, it scared. Well, there were two parts of this game that scared me. Mm-hmm. Um, the rest was just gory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, Splatterhouse. I I figured that's where you were gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> Splatterhouse. So yes. I've played Splatterhouse before, but I admittedly it was so hard. I remember yes. it being hard, mm-hmm. and at the age that I was, I could not make it far enough to really. <laughs> <laughs> so you never made it to uh, the part where he actually finds his girlfriend. No, she starts, she turns into the monster. No, the fighter and killer. What? Yeah. yeah. Spoiler yeah, alert. Game, yeah. <laughs> that game was difficult, but I remember the rhetoric when it came out. Like you know, people were like, "This is the goriest episode." Yeah. You know, you gotta have two parts, and <laughs> you, know, you gotta hold your hand when you have to just buy this game. And I remember like playing it, and at the time it was probably like one of the gorier games out there, cause you're, I mean, even though you're killing the monsters, the, you know, it's, it's blood. So mm-hmm. and the board was just like, looked like intestines and stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah. like you're walk like the house, when you get to the house, there were certain parts that looked like you were walking through somebody's intestines. Right, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, it was awesome. The game was awesome. The dude with the with the um, sack on his head, he had the chainsaw for the hands. Mm-hmm. Oh, I loved it. Loved Correct it. me if I'm wrong. Any yes game? Genesis. Genesis. In Turbo Graphics 16. In Turbo okay. 16, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Three of them, then they redid it for the 360, the 360 yeah, version. There, really there were three. There were three. There ended up being three games, and then they redid it. Right. Yeah, there was actually like a 3D version, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, with. Yeah. At the time, current generation. Yeah, it, yeah. it was just after after the second one, they just didn't mm-hmm. know what. To yeah, they were just throwing them. To, yeah, they were just new people <laughs> just going to buy them because they were playing. Just put some blood in it and put the right. guy with the Jason mask on, and we'll just go with it. But, huh. the, but the first one though, the first one, it was like that was kind of like it was a it was a cheat. Like it was basically your your horror slasher because the dude finds a mask. Yeah, it's reminiscent of Jason's mask, mm-hmm. but it's red and mm-hmm. black. Puts it on and gets you superpowers. Looks like Jason. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. got a jumpsuit with the arms cut yeah, off. He's like, big old bulky. Big, yeah. yeah. <laughs> huh. <laughs> but then, like you, it, you, you go through this house, this mansion, to find your girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Come to find out, she's been infected by whatever demons are in there. You got to fight her. You end up killing her. So then you got to play the rest of the game, um, getting revenge mm-hmm. for for her. Damn. Yeah. yeah. It was good. Okay. I, 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 it definitely deserves <laughs> to be on this list. Yeah. Name alone. <laughs> <laughs> um, but where do y'all think it goes? I'm, I would, I would put it. Um, so it, it wasn't scary. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, well, I would say I take that back. As a kid, you might have been scared of it, right? Because you hadn't really seen anything like it. Yeah. But um, like I, I could play it now, and I'm not gonna get scared. Yeah. Okay. Friday the Thirteenth, I'm still gonna get scared. Yeah. So I'm gonna put it under Friday the You never know when that Negro is gonna pop up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Splatterhouse. We're putting it below yeah. Friday. Because still Friday thirteenth, the, the anxiety of having to save the kids and then not knowing when Jason's gonna pop up. Like Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna specify still... the Genesis version. So mm-hmm. mine, I'm not sure if this is gonna count, but it's more creepy than scary. Mm-hmm. And this was a sleeper hit. This game was really good. A lot of people just skipped over it. Indigo Prophecy. Wow, I forgot about that. Indigo one. Prophecy was really good. Yeah. Um, you're this gentleman, you blank out. I think you murder somebody or you get, yes. it's been a while since I played it. Yes. You either murder somebody or you they think you murder somebody. It has like dealing with cults and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And you have to like 
solve your own crime for the most part. Mm-hmm. And it's not more or less just creepy because it has like like all of these like weird things going on. So it wasn't necessarily scary mm-hmm. but creepy, but it was a good, really good game and a lot of people slept on it. So I'm not sure if that's count because it's not really scary. Yeah, I think it's more so if, if it were a movie, I would probably call that a thriller more so than a horror movie. More like the tone is a lot like Sixth Sense. Yes. Right? So I don't know, like I said, well, since, uh, how about, um, and it could probably be an honorable mention. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, let's say, let's say, I do agree. It is a, a really good game and it started off, so it was made by, uh, I can't remember the developers now, but the people who made Heavy Rain yeah, and they, Detroit. Yeah, and that was like the, that was kind their of like first, style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And most of the games that they made were pretty good and they were mm-hmm. all kind of reminiscent of that. Mm-hmm. Um, Trying to think of something else. Left for Dead, too. I'm cool with that. Those witches. <laughs> the witches. The, oh, the witches. Yeah. What's Left for Dead? It too? looked like he was having like PTSD. I did because I was content. <laughs> I was gonna say that one right there, but that wasn't necessarily scary. Mm-hmm. Um that's the only thing I can think of. No, half yeah. of the, half of the dead, I mean uh Left for Dead. Two. Yes. It's a really good game. Very good game. And it was very scary. So, so I'll be glad when they make part three. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Calamity go, Gannon. Go ahead. And, <laughs> go ahead and hold your breath on that one. <laughs> Maybe that and Cyberpunk come out the same time. <laughs> hey. We all know Valve can't count to three. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who, who don't know, Left 4 Dead was a uh, a franchise or two. Uh, it had a sequel. And it was a four player online, or I want to say couch co op. You can split yeah, screen that. Uh-huh. So you played through these maps, and it was procedurally generated where enemies were placed. Mm-hmm. So you could play through a map, and it would never play through the same way twice. Mm-hmm. And these enemy types were so horrifying when they popped out, especially the witch. <laughs> yes, the witch is by far the like <laughs> She the, would be singing a song or something, one, right? She would be crying. Yes. And there would always be someone like, some... All four of us would play, and someone would be like, don't shoot the whip. And somebody would be like, she would. <laughs> she doesn't attack unless you attack her. And oh. she's like, rabid. <laughs> but absolutely. Oh, you weren't supposed to shoot her? Oh, my God. You are the guy. <laughs> every time I played that game, every time I shoot. saw her, I just unloaded on no, her. No, like, she oh, doesn't. she's just going to sit there? Like, <laughs> she doesn't passing. attack you unless you attack her. Oh. Oh my God! <laughs> I mean, we were, and we eventually ended up killing her, but <laughs> but well, yeah, you were creating a whole bunch of bullets that you could have saved, <laughs> and two people that got dropped. Yeah, <laughs> that goes back to what I was saying. Where normally horror games stray away from being multiplayer because having that advantage makes things less scary, right? Right. You don't go in a haunted house with people because you're not scared. You right. have somebody to help you. But that game, even with four player co op, still scared the hell out of you. Because you're just walking, you just hit. As soon as you run out of ammo, you got to find some way to run. <laughs> or just getting to that safe house. You know, just running and it's like all the yes. stuff behind you. You're just trying to. Oh, man, nailing the door yeah. shut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Leaving someone out there. <laughs> mm, I want an Indigo Prophecy to be on the air. Make a scary Indigo Prophecy. <laughs> Make a scary Indigo yeah. Prophecy. Scary Indigo Prophecy. Yo, Mike, I got one for you. Shadow Man. <laughs> if you haven't guys haven't noticed that uh, JB's a shadow man advocate. <laughs> it's a scary game actually. That's a, it's like it's like pretty there's some pretty messed up stuff in there. It's like based on like voodoo kind of ish, isn't it? It is, but you're like in the underworld and there's this like asylum with all these like horribly tortured people in it and I don't know, it's pretty it, it, as a kid it was it was it's pretty weird. scary. I remember playing the game but I just don't remember it. Someday <laughs> Who's going? Can we place Left 4 Dead 2 on the list? Oh, yes. <laughs> Where does it go? Where do you uh, think? Right now, we have seven Splatter House, six Friday the 13th, five Until Dawn, four Dead Space, um, three FNAF, two Silent Hill 2, one RE7. So, in a long scheme of things, like Left 4 Dead isn't like super scary. They're, those other games are far more scarier than yeah. all of them. I would maybe put Left 4 Dead on the bottom, like yeah. below Splathouse. Yeah, I mean, I was probably if I could, I was probably more freaked out about yeah. Splatterhouse yeah. at that time than Left 4 Dead at the time I played that. Okay, 
I am. I don't have. Uh, I don't have a horse in that race. No. So. <laughs> Left for Dead. Oh, do we agree? Two goes on. Yes. If we have to pick two, one. Not, yeah, I don't think anybody plays one. <laughs> Left for Dead. Two. So on the bottom of our list. Okay. Uh, it's back to me again. I will say Alien Isolation. Did either of you play that? Wait, hold up. <clears throat> so there was a, a Alien game that was good and playable. I've... Don't you don't <laughs> let Space Marine cloud your judgment. <laughs> so Space Marine is a, a hard game for a different reason, mm-hmm. but <laughs> <laughs> Alien Isolation actually intended to be scary and it succeeded. So yeah. it wasn't playable. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. I didn't get a chance to partake, but I think he's right. I think that got even I'm... though Marine put such a bad taste. Mm-hmm. I think people were just like, ugh. Mm-hmm. But I think it was actually a pretty good game from what I read. Yeah, so Alien Isolation takes place actually during the first Alien movie, I want to say, and you actually play as Sigourney Weaver's character. Mm. Ripley. Okay. Yes, you play as Ripley. So she wakes up out of cryo sleep, and the crew is gone. She's trying to find them. And as you're searching, the uh, alien, I forget the name of Xenomorph. the Xenomorph, mm-hmm pops up uh it feels like randomly i'm pretty sure it's scripted where it pops up but it has the ai of the xenomorph is so impressive like the way it pops out and it literally skulks around and you have to hide because for a majority of the game ripley is not armed so it's one of those you have to run and hide until she gets armed and even armed you're not killing that xenomorph Mm -hmm. so when that thing's like skulking around looking for you and you feel like it sees you, but you don't know, it really creates that fear. And the one thing Alien Isolation does well is building that atmosphere. It's It doesn't bombard you left and right with enemies. Okay. So you spend majority of that game just in dead silence, anticipating something coming out to get you. And... That's a skirt. Nature skirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, skirt. <laughs> so I know I'm the only person here who played it, and I'm I, I'm really like I would die on that hill. This got to go on this list. Okay, <laughs> is that scary? Okay. Well, I'll let you since I <laughs> you place it. Um, I would put it. I would honestly put it below Dead Space, but above Until Dawn. That would mean. Okay. I have no qualms or quality. <laughs> Alien Eye. All right. So right now, we have nine on our list so far. Nine, Left 4 Dead 2. Eight, Splatterhouse for the Genesis. Seven, Friday the 13th for the NES. Six, Until Dawn. Five, Alien Isolation. Four, Dead Space. Three, FNAF. Two, Silent Hill 2. One, RE7. All right. It's actually it's looking pretty good. Okay. It's a good list. I think I'm starting to run on E for games. That's right. I got a couple. Um, um, so, um, you ever played Fear? I've heard of it, but I've yeah. never played any of it. Okay. Yeah. It's basically a first person shooter. Mm-hmm. Um, you're part of this like technical team. Mm-hmm. Got I forget you're infiltrating something. <laughs> yeah, like, and all tactical teams. Yeah, I play one and two. I think I play one, two, but and three. Aren't, three. You're looking for the girl, right? Like, yeah, like the girl. Is... And but the whole time, like you, so your character, I believe, has some type of co- or makes some type of connection with the girl, and she's like leading you through. But mm-hmm. at the same time, she's scaring the shit out of you. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something along that. Yeah. <laughs> but I played it. Actually, I bought it when it came out. Um, it was scary. Mm-hmm. I wasn't really scared. Um, yeah, it was meant to be scary. I mean, they to tried be- to put the horror into the first person, and that's probably the best try. I don't think anybody's ever really tried it besides them. Mm-hmm. Did anybody try to make like a horror, like first person shooter? It probably were. Probably but did. that's probably the. With that same tone, I can't really think. Yeah, that's yeah, probably yeah. the best one out mm-hmm. there. And I think I played, I think there were three of them. I played all three. Three got a little more arcadey than the other ones. Yeah. yeah. Three, I remember three the most because I think that's one of the only ones that made it to console i think the other two were like pc games yeah. mm-hmm. something like that i'm not sure did they re-release them on like they did crisis you know it was a big pc uh-huh. thing and then like later on they brought it to console i don't but know i played but yeah that's fair yeah. i wouldn't 
put it higher. You, you don't sound. You sound like. Meh, yeah, I, I don't mean, have. I don't have too many fun. Yeah, I, it. like I don't. So I bought me, it because it was supposed to be scary, and then I stopped playing it because it wasn't scary. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm all right. Eh. Like I ran out of juice, but I'm thinking there aren't too many scary games, so you might be all on you for you. I got it's fine. I'll uh, I'll throw them out there. What about um? So this one, I don't. I remember it as a kid, but then we were talking about it before the show started, and in hindsight, it might have sucked. But I remember being super scary. It's not going to go on the list because we both we all agree apparently that it's a, a dumb game. But I wanted to mention Clock Tower. Then I think I played it a little bit. That's where you're the girl. Yeah, you're a woman and you're kind of walking through a London town trying to escape this hunchback serial killer that has a pair of hedge clippers. <laughs> okay. But the cool is a point. It was a point click adventure. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing was, even for that for that time, it was on the PlayStation One. Um the guy was like procedurally generated. Like he would pop out at random places every time. Okay. Mm. So you, you have like a pair of shears or something? Yeah, it was like that? shears. Okay. And you'd be walking to a school and it would be random what locker he pops out of or what closet he pops out of. And it as a at the age that I played it, it scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> but <laughs> going back and reading those reviews and seeing some trailer, and I was like, oh my God, this game looks like shit. I could not, <laughs> I could not in good conscience put that in the best horror. <laughs> but I just wanted to bring it up. Some nostalgia for you guys who are old. <laughs> A good game, though, that I'll fight to put on this list is Condemned. That's the one that we were talking about with yeah. the hobos. You remember that one? I, you probably never played it because oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was exclusively yes. on the three six. Yeah, ah, yes, would have yes, never. Yes. And ever it came out it. part two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but with the hobos. Yeah. So Tell okay, me the story. It was a Sega first person shoot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's one and two, but out of the both of them, I think one is better because it's a little more focused. Yeah, two's a little two more. Two yeah. yeah, it announced it introduced too much stuff, and yeah. So you play as a detective, and he's looking for a serial killer. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> he just had an epiphany. Yeah. Let me get you condemned. Right. <laughs> so, okay, go ahead. So condemned, you play as a, a detective. He's looking for a serial killer. And the serial killer is like your arch nemesis. Mm -hmm. Like y'all know each other very well. You're, so he's, Dexter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, Dexter, he's kind of like a good guy. I don't know if I would call this guy like morally. He's on that moral compass of good. I wouldn't say that. Okay. But this guy somehow has control over these like hobos so you spend most of the time like fighting these be, like be junkies the homeless, <laughs> the homeless yeah, like, yeah. Well, it's my type of game in the face with sounds like an xbox game. <laughs> <laughs> so but you're like you're walking through like the most play the majority of the time this place takes uh is set in condemned buildings mm -hmm. that's why it's what it's called right so you're walking through this like real dark condemned building and you just hear like in the distance <laughs> And you're trying to like crack. And you're trying to figure out where it's coming from. And like I understand not being able to visualize a scary hobo, but <laughs> these hobos are scary. <laughs> Grown up with them all my life. <laughs> not scared. I am one. So. <laughs> and you normally, even though you are a cop, by the time you get deep into the game, you're low on ammo, so you have to fight with anything you can find. So you're ripping like rub rebar about the walls mm -hmm. or like pipes or two by fours. And yeah, it's it this game creates some like general fear. And when you get close to the end, it leans more into like the supernatural mm -hmm. to to not spoil anything for somebody who wants to go back and play condemned. But it gets into like this more supernatural side mm -hmm. and it's a good take my word for it. Break I, your Xbox I, I, strike. I don't know. I don't know about about Junkie Killer 99. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Are you like a pro junkie advocate? <laughs> Shoot that door. Don't let this guy beat you in the face. And your parents let you play this? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, at the, it was a 360, 360. game, so this I was. Is, this, is, this is worse than Mortal Kombat. Technically, like, I would have rather my kids play Mortal Kombat than, <laughs> than Crackhead Killer 2000. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Condemned. I forgot about that game. <laughs> Ninety four crime build a game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Walking we're gonna just beating homeless people up. Like keep that in the back of your mind. Okay, I guess. Um, <laughs> darkness. 
Ooh, mm. that's a good one, actually. Did you play that one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, guys with the snakes that age, hey, Jackie. That's a good one. That's I actually, I forgot completely about Me too, it. and that's why I was like, ooh. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's a good and, mention. And I played it from front to back. Mm-hmm. That's one of the few games I played. I like it was a good game. Based on a comic book series, right? Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, they would eat the hearts, the snake things. Yeah, you play a... Uh, Right. He's the son-in-law of a mob boss. Is that what it right? was? The right. daughter was the actual daughter, correct? And the, they your girlfriend. You and you come back with and the it, snakes. And yes. They would go away in the light. Yes. That's, that's the game being called Darkness. Yes. So for those that aren't familiar with Darkness, you play as the uh, son-in-law of a mob boss. You're dating his daughter. You go away for some reason, and they kill the daughter and beat you up. Yeah. And I don't remember what gives him the supernatural powers, but he now has these like tentacles, these uh, snake yeah monsters. But only be and you would have to kill the enemies and eat. They would eat their hearts, and that gave him power. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is a scary game. So we put it on the list, or yeah, I think that deserves to be on the list. That was scary. Baltimore, you scary. Baltimore, you scary. You go on the list. <laughs> Baltimore, number one. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's put darkness on the list. Okay. Where do you um, think it goes? Let's put darkness right below Friday 13. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So darkness is better than Splatterhouse. No. <laughs> John, have you played darkness? I've seen it. <laughs> I'll give it to him. I'll, I'll give it to him. Darkness is. <laughs> <laughs> I give it. You can put it right above. So no. better than Leopard Dead too. No. And that's <laughs> the last. The darkness last. No. <laughs> Just think about how long it had to take you to remember Darkness. But it was still a good game. It was a good game. Yeah, but you right, had to man. put it in. <laughs> Maybe it was so scary, you had to repress it. I just, I love the amount of effort you're putting to fight for it. You're just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I would put Ridiculous, on. but no, I'm, yeah, I think darkness is a fair mention. We should definitely put it on the list, and we'll see if it lives. Okay, it won't. We have a couple in studio Me. guests. What's funny? <laughs> Don't get her. Don't get her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another one that I have um, that I just recently revisited: Alan Wake. Was that the 360 game that they were going to make into a series and they yes. did not? They did, did not. They did not. I um, remember vaguely playing it. That's when you were, if you're, no, no, no. you're in the cabin, mm-hmm. you're a writer, mm-hmm. and then like stuff starts to go crazy and like mm-hmm. shadow people start. Okay. But I didn't play that much of it. I remember like the guys sweating, you had to like duck under the axe and okay, all right. Damn, you man. Played all the way through that? I did. Whoa. Twice. I beat it twice. Did really? Okay. <laughs> Bless your soul. So, <laughs> it wasn't a bad game. I just didn't get into it. Alan Wake is made by Remedy, the people who make control. Okay. Right? So you're right. Alan Wake was supposed to be a series. They created Alan Wake and made a standalone DLC, American Nightmare. Okay. And never revisited it. <laughs> Until recently, Control had some DLC called uh, AWE. Ooh. And it makes references to Alan Wake. So basically, mm. Alan Wake exists in Control's canon. Okay, cool. That's so, cool. Yeah, so I don't know if they're teasing that they are going to revisit Alan Wake or not. Maybe I need to check Control out. Control? Uh, absolutely. I mean, do it on next gen <laughs> on a system that can actually run it. Okay. <laughs> not play it on my Switch. Do not try to play it on the, Well, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't play it on a Switch. But <laughs> I would wait until the next gen okay. version comes out. Right. But um, yeah, Alan Wake is definitely a hard game. You play as an author who is looking for his kidnapped wife. Okay. And you're running through these woods, and these shadow people are, like, skulking through the woods, finding you. And the only thing you have to defend yourself is a flashlight. Actually, I remember that. And you had to keep finding batteries, right? Yes, yes. you had to keep finding... Oh. <laughs> which is the funny thing. So the game was sponsored by Energizer. So, so they, made it a, <laughs> they made it a point to say these are Energizer batteries. <laughs> Wife's gone in the forest. Batteries. Oh, that's Duracell. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I'm using them. I'd rather die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ugh, in-game marketing. That's scary. <laughs> but I think Alan Wake should go on the list. Okay, again, I'll let you figure that one out. I didn't okay. partake enough in it to... to... Um, because it's actually scary as... As a adult, I think it's actually scary. I probably would put it above Splatterhouse. Okay. You did. <laughs> and I probably would put it above Friday the 13th. <laughs> for those 
So those of y'all that are not watching and listening, John's giving me like the death stare. I'm gonna snap him. Don't snap. Don't <laughs> drop that shit. <laughs> I can't snap. <laughs> well, that's probably like a safety. <laughs> I can only grab me. <laughs> All right. Uh, but I don't think. That from off of Alex, this guy from Smash, you got Meat guy. Alex. Meat guy? Yeah, meat guy. Again. Alex the meat guy. Yeah. Alex. Alex and his meat. And Alex. Yeah. Yeah. And Alex. Oh, Alex is the woman. Yeah. Steve. No, is Steve. The guy. Is the guy. Steve. Steve. Is the guy. Steve. Alex Steve. Steve. Zombie Enderman. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't think. I would stop at putting it above Until Dawn. I don't think it goes above that. Okay. Again, it's up to you guys. Okay. Listen. Okay. Yeah, let me uh, put some. I know something I'm forgetting. Go ahead, throw um, some more out. Okay. Uh, the last one that I have to suggest is uh, The Thing. Did any of you play that? I did. That game was cool. I didn't play it. So yeah. The Thing is based off of the 1980s John Carpenter movie. Yes. Mm-hmm. Where uh, it's a research team in Alaska, and one of them are secretly this uh, monster. Who, it's an alien, right? Yes, the thing. It is a one thing. of the people in the yeah. party is. So the game was, uh, for the most part, the game is like an action kind of third person shooter. Mm-hmm. But while you're going through the game, one of your people in the party is actually right. mm-hmm. the thing. And you have to spend the game kind of keep questioning and looking and making sure. And you got to keep the people's anxiety down. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There was like a fear meter mm-hmm. and that you had to make sure nobody because if they if your people in your party's fear meter went up they started throwing deceit into the party and people started like accusing other people who to be the thing and they start killing each other off and you need to keep everybody alive because the more people in your party is alive the easier the levels work but uh when you make it to the end and people start revealing who are the thing and it's it's hard to explain the anxiety that that puts <laughs> that that built and this was that was a pretty impressive mechanic for a game that was on the original Xbox. It was PlayStation. Well, I played it on PlayStation 2. Yeah, yeah I so think it was yeah, on PS2 thing, as well. Yeah. I played it on the, the yeah. OG. They were freaking out. They were like, oh, oh my God. Oh, 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 oh my God. No, jeez, Lord. <laughs> but as far as a licensed game back in the day when like licensed games were always crap, mm-hmm. that was a really good one and a very scary one. Okay. <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as memorability uh being memorable i guess i will fault it look at, look at that one yeah that's not scary i wouldn't call that scary. not at all but uh um, okay. something so i probably would put it on Ooh. the bottom of our list the thing i'm gonna put the thing on the bottom okay i got one yeah i forgot about this um i don't know if this was considered a game but the little bit I played was very good. PT. Sorry, oh my PT. God. That's a good one. I forgot all about that. That's a really good one. I'm sorry that that ever came to fruition. That game was really creepy for the little demo. Oof. So are we counting PT? Because PT technically is a demo. Right, that's why I said. It's a demo. It's a demo. But I'm okay with it. I'm really okay with it. Um, so, at the time, it had really had um, brought back the spookiness of Solid because Resident Evil Seven, of course, has been made. So yes. this is the first game that really just made everything creepy. Like you're always just like looking over your shoulder, mm-hmm. literally. Like you're just in this house, and and of course, Hideo Kojima is just uh, so. Correct creepy. me if I'm wrong. PT, I mean. I know, I pretty much know this part. PT was the demo for what was supposed to be eventually a Silent Hill reboot. Right, yes. Made by Kojima and Guillermo del Toro. Right? Yes. Right? And at the end, Norman Reedus is the Norman person. Reedus is the protagonist, what right. was yeah, the protagonist. Yeah. And it just never came to fruition because Kojima wound up leaving Konami, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, yeah, man, that thing is terrifying. It and, was. and it never played the same way twice, I don't think. Yeah, and it was just like, like you would go in the bathroom, it's like a baby in the sink and <laughs> the clock keeps turning on and yeah, yeah so john have you played it so for playstation guy i'm shocked that yeah, you never played yeah. it they were selling because they took it off the marketplace and people were selling playstations with it on for like a 
thousand dollars and people like I'll buy it. Yeah, nobody. So you can't re-download that. So the only way to play it is if you have a PS4 that didn't delete it. Okay. But uh, basically, you play as this protagonist, played as Norman Reedus, first person, and the whole game takes place in this apartment hallway. So you just go through the apartment hallway, and every time you go through this one door, you pop up at the beginning of the hallway. <laughs> so you just continually are just going through the same hallway, but every time you go, something would change, and something would be more off. But there were multiple ways to play through it. So there was one perfect ending that you had to figure out how to get. And it was little things like you had to pick up a phone during the third hallway walkthrough and listen to a message. Or if you had to look at this alarm clock during the fifth walkthrough and find, I never got it. Yeah, but people really I. played that demo like several thousand times trying to like figure it out. Figure it out. But this, it is horrific. <laughs> <laughs> so some guy, I'm a, some little inside baseball. Uh, some guy uh, broke the code in PT and found out that as you're walking, the girl who is like the ghost of the game I know what you're is about always I saw following. Video that. Yeah. <laughs> She's behind you. She's always time. behind. Right. And every time you turn, she turns. So you're never supposed to see her. But he just happened to go into the code and see that she's always behind you, which is even more scary. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a few times she, like, you open the door and she, like, hop out. But it's just like, you yeah. know. And you're just like, oh, what the hell? It was really, it was I really would have liked to see that game come to fruition. Damn you, Konami and Hideo. Um, they gave us Death Stranding instead. Uh, uh, that's another. That's a story for another day. <laughs> Long episode. <laughs> Wait, so I'm willing that if you're just asking me, that thing needs to be high on the list. I agree. Too. I'll allow it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I put that probably on man. I know. I. I Probably I'm out of pure creepy and scariness. That's probably number one. Like Resident Evil Seven. Uh, so uh, let me rephrase that. Okay. I didn't play through, <laughs> Here we go. I'm gonna let you decide on it. I didn't play through Resident Evil Seven. Uh huh. I played through PT enough, and I played through Silent, Silent Hill Two. So the only reason I would maybe I don't know I might put it up below Silent Hill Two. The only reason. I wouldn't put it number one is because there's just not enough content in it. I guess you're right about that. It's only like an hour. I don't even remember how long it took to play through, but it's definitely shorter than an hour. Yeah, it is. But um, it's a good hour, though. I would no question put it under RE7. I don't know about putting it above or below Silent Hill 2. That's that's the coin toss for me. Hand of toes? I just, I just, I just, I just, something just popped in my head. All right, let's, let's figure out what it's going to be. All right. Uh, what about two? We're gonna put that two. That's fine. You fine? Yeah. Make it All right. PT two. PT two. PT. Uh oh. Uh oh. I got one for you. All right. right. What you got? It's a classic. Right. Ooh. I'm going back to NES. You take oh. my pants off. This is this is a combination of horror and sci-fi. Okay. Maniac Mansion. School me. Yeah. <laughs> what? I don't. Man. I'm not. Privy. I've heard it, but oh, I did not want to take it. <laughs> so it's a point and click adventure. Okay. Um. You play as you play as several different characters, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's several different endings to the game, depending on what you do. Like one ending, you end up helping an alien promote his book, <laughs> and then he becomes famous. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, that happens in the game. Uh -huh. <laughs> but um, uh, I can't remember. I I'm trying to figure out a way to explain it. But you're. I think you, you guys, the car breaks down and you're in this mansion and you're, tr you're trying to find a way out. Mm -hmm. And then through a series of un unfortunate events that occur, because you can like put a, these snickets. You can put a you can put a hamster in the microwave and turn the microwave on and kill a guy, <laughs> one of the guys that lives in the house hamster. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the father of the scientist, he's in the basement doing it. Like the game is crazy. Like you actually have to Read up on the game. All right. Like, watch a couple YouTube videos on the game. Right. Maniac Mansion on NES. Not so much. It's, like I said, it's like horror, sci-fi, science. You know, it's 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 a mishmash of, of a lot of genres. Okay. But it's a really, it was a really good game on um, on uh, NES. And it kept me up for hours. Because, like like I said, there's different different endings, different ways of playing the game. Um, different right. ways to die as well, too. Like getting electrocuted, drowning, um, <laughs> getting tortured, all types of stuff. Are you willing? 
to take anything off the list to put that on. Nope, because... I just wanted to mention it. Okay. Because <laughs> it was a great game. Okay. And I'm pretty sure people listening who have played it, they would be like, oh my God, yeah. yeah. It was <laughs> a great game. A deep great. cut for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we have 13. Okay. If y'all want to stop, is there anything that we forgot to mention that anybody wants to mention? That probably was. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if it was, it's just kind of like, I just took a glance. Nothing that we haven't mentioned or needs to be mentioned. So there's a GameCube game called Internal Darkness. Yeah, I thought about that. I've never played it, Same so I can't fight for it. Right. No, yeah. Right. Uh, also, uh, Doki Doki Literature Club. I know it's... What? You never heard of it? I have heard of Doki Doki, Doki, Doki Literature Club. <laughs> it's Japanese. Huh? Doki Doki Literature Club. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert. If those of you who haven't played it or playing it and don't want to be spoiled, I'm going to just... I'm going to speak with my hand up. I'm going to lower it when I'm done talking about it. So, mute. Doki Doki Literature Club. Oh, Cam, I guess audio people can't do that, right? <laughs> I don't know. I guess just so fast about, forward a minute. No, we're about to start and start now. Fast and, forward a minute. Yeah, fast forward a minute. Um, <laughs> Doki Doki Literature Club um, is a adventure game. It's one of those, uh, it plays like Phoenix Wright. Uh-huh. Where it's just dialogue trees and uh, stuff you make. Where you're a guy in an all girls school, mm-hmm. and it starts off as a dating sim. So it's in Steam. It's a PC game, mm-hmm. and it's sold as a dating sim. Mm-hmm. So people downloaded this thinking it was a dating sim. So you you go in, you dating girls and learning their personalities, and then all of a sudden somebody gets murdered. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And it literally turns into a horror game. It sounds like most people like, oh, <laughs> it's usually my self esteem that gets murdered. So, <laughs> this thing, like a lot of people sing their it, this game's praise. Mm-hmm. And I've always wanted to give it a try. I haven't played it. That's the only reason I, I don't feel comfortable suggesting it. But I just, for those of you listening who have played it and you're like, why the hell is nobody saying it? That's why I'm not saying it because I haven't played it enough to. I haven't heard of it. Yeah, I but think I've heard of it. Check it out. It's on Steam. I don't know how much it costs, but from what everybody's talking about it, Good game. it sucks that the the twist is has been given out mm-hmm. because I'm pretty sure that's the big seller. I, I'm a. I'm good. You're good. Shoot <laughs> 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 It sucks that the twist is out there and gone, but um. I mean, had you probably not known, it would have been a yeah good twist. I'm not the type of crazy perv who downloads dating sims right, so like, that's not <laughs> okay. imagine like having your... i can't there's too many people here so now i can't tell you <laughs> so i'm couple... sure that ruined some people's nights so a couple um <laughs> honorable mentions outlast we didn't mention outlast because i didn't like it yeah, neither did I. <laughs> neither did I. um even with that I didn't. They That's were, another one that was good that I didn't like enough to mention. Um, that was uh, made by the, the original director of Resident Evil. He left Capcom yep. and made his own game. Yeah. Fatal Frame. That's another one that I I recognize. I know a lot of people like it, but I didn't like it enough to to mention. Dead by Daylight. Didn't play it. So. Uh, that's the multiplayer game. It's the uh, four against one, yeah. four players against one person yeah. who's a zombie uh, or a, some kind games. of iconic monster. Yeah. Slender the Eight. Not a fan. Mm, no, no. Fear, we talked about nah. that. GGs. Friday the 13th, uh, even though it's a multiplayer game, I don't know what that considered. Out of the two, so if that one is literally Dead by Daylight, but just with the Friday the 13th license. Out of those two, Dead by Daylight is the better game. Well, I guess the computer All right, the computer's telling us <laughs> we're running long. Wait, wait, are you sure it was the computer? Ooh, Ooh. spooky dookies. <laughs> dookie, dookie. So, All right. anyway. What, what's our list? The list is as 13, The Thing. The Thing. 12, Darkness. Darkness. 11, Left 4 Dead 2. 10, Splatterhouse. Splatoon. Oh. Splatoon. <laughs> <laughs> 9, Friday the 13th for the NES. Uh-huh. 8, Alan Wake. Alan Wake. 7, Until Dawn. Until Dawn. 6, Alien Isolation. Mm-hmm. 5, Dead Space. Dead Space. 4, Friday... Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted, mm-hmm. three Silent Hill, two, two PT, and one, the scariest game of all time, Resident Evil Seven. Resident Ooh, Evil Seven. I'm gonna play that. I I'm think that's play. a. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna buy it. I'm it's gonna play. cheap. It's like it's absolutely fifteen cheap. bucks. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If you uh, if you're one of those people that don't get nauseous, I would suggest playing it in VR. Okay. If you have access to that. Okay. All right. Yeah. You're not gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's the list. That's a good solid list. I think Ooh. that uh, we good. So um, I'm gonna put my mask back on before we head out. Mm. 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 Bear with me. Bear with me. Bear. Bear with me, Hannah. Throw. All right. While he gets his life together. Right. Um. Thanks for watching the show. Uh. Like we said, the store is going to be closed for everybody who is in the Baltimore area for a while while we rebuild. But if you can still shop at mapgametech.com. Yes, and still drop off for repairs. Just um, email us or call us. Phone number still the same. Um, what is the phone number? I don't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> you can find that information at mapgametech.com. The email is mapgametech at gmail.com. <laughs> Uh, you can follow us on both social media uh, at MAP Game Tech on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, uh, Facebook. I don't. I don't. <laughs> or subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com backslash MAP Technologies. I'm sorry. That, I, that, that did it. Why did I do it? I just started figuring out my, my child's birthday. Like, why would now y'all want me to remember the now y'all are sick old. I'm ready to go. Y'all make me sick. Please, uh, if you want to follow us all individually, you can play games with me on Xbox and PlayStation. My game attack is Charm City Champ. And same thing for me, uh King Godimus. <laughs> I'm so laughing. <laughs> you can find me. Uh um What's my gamer tag? J Infinity. <laughs> no, yeah. J Infinity on P. It's like this number. Find JB on YouTube. He is trying to beat all 256 N64 games. 296, but you know, he's counting. Ah, you know, give or take <laughs> a couple of Supermans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? Where can uh where can they uh find you on YouTube? Uh just go to n64.tv. Hell yeah, n64.tv. That'll link you to your Twitch and YouTube. Yep. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. That's yep. the show. Thank you guys for watching this. I'll be safe out there, y'all. <laughs> he doesn't know the number. <laughs> <All right. laughs>